Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today we're going to be focusing on branding design, looking at how to lay out and design a letterhead for a company, as well as a two-sided business card. These are two key components to any brand identity, so it's important for you as the designer to create them in a concise, simple way uh, that represents the brand that you're designing them for. So as you can see on my screen here, I created a um, letterhead with key components such as the logo as well as other key information that you want to include and uh, same goes for the business card and because you're working on such a limited amount of space it's important when you're designing business cards to keep the information um, clear and concise as well you don't want to start cluttering your business cards um, it just will it'll it'll make it uh, more distracting and people will just not even look at it so Let's actually just get into it today. I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to show you that I've created the back side of a uh, letterhead. Okay, so you can come up with a cool pattern, something that rep represents your brand. So brand identity doesn't stop at just the logo design. Afterwards, you're going to have to look at patterns, colors, typography. And these are just things that I've made up on the fly here. Um, so I took the icon from the mark, the logo, and I created a cool pattern with it. So we'll get into that. And then there is the, uh, the letterhead itself. Okay, I'll put my guides on there. All right, so again, very clean, simple, easy design, okay? And that's what, in the end, will, will stand out above the rest. So let's go to page three here. And I'll show you what I did. First things first, I'm gonna to go to my layers, click on backgrounds. So any background that I do will work off this layer. I'm gonna to go to my rectangle frame tool, click, drag, hold, draw out a box that is the entire page. Let's make it black for now. Go to swatches, black. And I made the tint or I made it 95% black. X. Okay, so there's that. So let's make it 90. There we go. 90 is better. Okay, there's the pattern I used. I'm going to bring that in next. Actually, let's go to my layers here. And actually, that can be background as well. Let's bring that over. Just draw out a box and there it is. If I go to my alignment panels up top here, okay, I'm gonna go to align to page. Those can also be found in window. Um, where was that? Object and layout and align, okay. So I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna go up here, align to page, click center and click vertical centers. And I just want to increase this actually just a bit, just so it fills out the entire page. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I'm actually happy with the results. Make it a little bit bigger. Center, align, how does that look? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, happy with that. So this is where I'm gonna to go to my effects uh, palette now and play with the blending mode so it blends in. I think, what did I do up here? I did overlay 80%, so let's try that out. So it's the same result there, as you can see up here. Same result. So you got all, all of a sudden you have a cool pattern that's based off your brand just by taking the logo uh, icon from the mark and making a cool pattern from it. So try something like that, or maybe your brand has a specific pattern that it uses, okay? I'm just going to copy this logo here. Again, I just took that, that icon out and made it larger. And I'm just gonna go over here and do Shift, Option, Command, V. That is paste in place. So if you ever copy something from another page, and you want to take it to another page, shift alt command V or shift alt. So sorry, Mac is shift option command V 
PC is shift alt control V. Okay. And that will place it exactly where you grabbed it from a previous page. So essentially let's just assume that that's, that's complete. Okay. So that's the back side of a letterhead going to the other side now. All right. This is where there's a little bit more thinking and a little bit uh, more planning involved. So I'm just going to be using placeholder text for today. I'm going to grab my type tool on the side here and let's draw out a box like so. And let's just make sure that I'm working off my type layer there. Okay. So remember to add type or placeholder text, put your cursor in the box or just click on the box and go to uh, type fill with placeholder text. Okay, so right now my text is aligned left, ragged right, which is fine. I'm actually going to show you how to add indents to this, okay? Because there should be some kind of indent to the paragraphs. Let's select all. Let's go to paragraph. If you don't have your paragraph window open, again, it's window, um, actually, I'm sorry, type and paragraph. Okay. That will open up the paragraph window, select all your text. And in my window here on the second field on the left, there's something called first line indent. Let's click that until you get to about 0 0.125. As you can see, that changes all the indents to all my, my paragraphs, which is, is good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to make this type, what did I make it up here? Dito, let's do that. That's a good classic serif font, D-I-D-O-T. And I don't want it to be bold. Let's just do regular. That looks pretty good. All right, good. So there's your body. All right. Now let's just say I want to specifically send this to somebody. Again, create another box up here. And let's just say, um, what did we call this, this girl up here? Amy, dear Amy. Amy Johnson, and then we could just make up a, uh, an address, okay? Amy Johnson. Okay, and she lives in Toronto. Um, actually, it's 1876 Bloor Street, Toronto, Ontario. Now, the typeface in my logo is um, Montserrat. So let's go with that. It's a really cool sans serif font, Montserrat black. Um, let's try bold, okay? So that's a cool, I like that. And then let's just do a couple paragraph breaks and just say, dear Amy, comma, and then there, that's where your body text would go. Good, so it's already starting to take shape here and just going back to what I created up here. Yeah, with best regards. And then let me show you how to put signature. First thing I wanna do actually is just click this top box, hold down option or alt and just make another copy. And let's bring that down here. And let's just put my name for now, Angelo Montilla. And I am the CEO. How about president? President slash CEO, sure. I'm just gonna bring this up because I'm gonna need, I'm just gonna cut this down a bit. I'm gonna need some space there. Okay, let's just period, perfect. Okay, bring that up. So there's my title. Okay, and I'm going to just create another box here. And let's just say, how about with warm regards? That sounds good. Comma. We gotta make that D D O D I D O T regular. 
and then try to line everything up on a guide. Warm regards. Perfect. Now let's just say I wanted to add my signature in there, okay? In InDesign, you can go to the pencil tool here and on your keyboard as a shortcut. And I guess you could try to use it with your mouse. That's kind of difficult to do, but if you have a steady hand and you want to do your signature with your mouse, you could do that. I'm just going to switch over to my tablet here. And I'm just going to, on the side here maybe, let's, um, let's do a signature here. Oh, I can't grab my pen tool again. Let's try that again. Okay, so let's just say that's my signature. I'm just gonna revert back to my mouse here. I, because I did this in two different strokes, they're two different boxes, okay? So what I usually do is I just collect both of them and then I would just do Command G or Control G to group it. You can also, before you do that, collect them and then increase, go to your swatches and make sure there's no fill on that. So click on the fill box and hit none because these areas in, in your signature will fill with white and you don't want that. I'm gonna click on, um, select both of them and go to my stroke window and you could increase the stroke weight. That's a little too thick. I think one point is fine. So I'm gonna group them, Command G, Shift Command and scale it down and then place it in an area where you leave some white space. As you can see, my smart guides there are telling me that where I've placed my signature is equally spaced between with warm regards and my title, my name and title. So why don't we leave it there for now? And then you can always go back and make it a little bit bigger and then play around with it. You could also rotate it just to make it, um, depending on how you write your signature, but I'll leave it like that for now. Okay, so there you go. I quickly put in some body text, altered the indents. I put in the name and the address of the person that it's being sent to. I gave a nice warm regards. I added my signature and my name and title. So what else do we need? Let's put in a logo, okay? So I have a version of that here. Um, what is that? Let's try this one. Just drop it in, okay? I'm just going to zoom in, cut it, make sure that I'm on the right layer when I'm doing this logo V. Okay, and I'm just going to bump it up. Remember, shortcut for resizing images, option command greater than on a Mac. Alter that box a bit, and then I want my logo down here maybe and I try to line the E up with the margin and then Music Factory with the margin. If I take my guides off, no, that's too, and it's also too big. So let's scale it down a bit. And maybe, maybe it doesn't have to be on the margin, something like that. Yep, I don't mind that. Maybe up a bit. Good. So you got your logo, you got your information. Then you can play with your typography as well. Let's just say you wanted to get in a, let's go to typography. Let's just say you wanted to get in a website. Let's just do something like this. www.music, how about groove music com. And let's make that Montserrat bold or semi bold. How about semi? That's cool. Double click one of the corners so the box fits. And then I like to rotate my text and place it, anchor it to something. Um, maybe anchor it to the top of Dear Amy or one of the guides. Also, it's too little too big at 12 points, so I'm gonna make it uh, yeah, make it 10 and then you can also select all and then just flush right. 
okay and then you could also just copy it let's just say you had another remember when you're rotating if I'm rotating hold shift to constrain it to um, 45 degree angles so there's 90 there we go let's just leave it at zero and then you could put another one up here something like that okay so you get a good flow of your type around the page as well and there's still a lot of good negative space here that it's not cluttering the page at all so there you go that's how you would design a backside of a letterhead as well as the the front with all the key information next up i'm going to show you how to design a business card before i get into that one thing that i want to note is it's important to instead of doing two different documents with uh, one for letterhead and one for business card it's essential that you know you save space and and time and have everything in one document okay so as you can see on my pages panel here the first four pages are the a4 letterhead that i designed and then down here is the business card um, document or size so let's just say uh, I'm gonna, gonna create another page here okay so when I create another page because this document initially began as an a4 document it's gonna revert to an a4 page so if I double click that page and I go over here in my tools uh, palette and let's click the page tool I'm gonna click the page tool and click on that page you'll notice I could if I wanted to just change the size of that page okay or even better if I click double click that I can actually change the page up here so if I wanted that to be an A4 I could do that as well okay so let's just go back okay so you can change the page size of that with your page tool click on that and then just change it from here okay so I'm going to do the the business cards in a different uh, video um, hope you enjoyed this and we'll talk to you soon